Good morning. This morning I want to share something with you. When I started university, I studied mathematics. A professor we had from Scotland, his name was Alistair. And he started off by telling us all something in our first year, I was just 18. He said, don't believe everything just because it's written down. Now, the funny thing is, three years later, he would slightly regret what he said. You see, we had this tutorial. We were practicing for the final exams of the year. And he gave us this quite difficult question that was on the previous year's exam paper. Of course, we all worked through it bit by bit and submitted it. And it was tricky, very tricky, especially the start. Anyway, when the results came back, I got 90% and quite a few other people got 100%. And so as you do, the first thing you do is you look to see where did I go wrong or what's the deal? But when I looked at it, I said, I didn't go wrong. They've gone wrong. They didn't read the start of the question. But why did the professor mark it right? And why did he mark mine wrong? And so you see, I was faced with a kind of embarrassing situation of going to the professor and saying, excuse me, sorry, um, I believe that the start of the question reads as follows, therefore this is what I did, and so I think that that's what should be done. So, humbly, he said, okay, let me have a think about it, let me take it away, and he did. So he consulted some of his other professors in the college, and two days later he came into our class apologized to us all and said basically that he had been wrong. Now the scary thing was that was also the exam paper for the year before, meaning that had I done the exam the year before, I would have been marked down for actually having been right. However, in this situation the professor showed a lot of humility. He wasn't afraid to go away, to question it, to see my trail of thought, to see what I had done, and to realize that, oh yeah, okay, actually, there was a mistake. And you see, he was the one that had said, don't believe everything just because it's written down. And to be honest, I hadn't gone out of my way to try to find a fault with him as a professor because I thought he was really good. However, life experience and just this exam paper, this thing, showed that there was a problem. And you see, sometimes it's the same in the church. My 11, 12 years of following Jesus has shown me the whole gay area in the church is profoundly inadequate. The, theolo the theology, the pastoral support, the whole notion that a lot of people still believe that homosexuality is, is some sort of a brokenness and that gay people are just broken straight people, the overemphasis on sexual purity, the afraid to have gay relationships, all that area in the church has caused any amount of people, including myself, anxiety, depression, fear of God, suicide, loneliness. It has contributed actually to even addictions such as things in pornography, acting out sexually, all sorts of stuff. And you see, even after years and years and years of healing, I still have become no more straight. I have a phenomenal love for Jesus and still I have a love for men. And just like the example in that professor, I say, look, I follow the methodology. I followed your course. I've done all the things that we should do. However, the answer I'm coming up with is not the answer that you have given. And so when we bring this to the church, and not just me, when we bring all these broken people to the church who have experienced the love of Jesus, but he has not made them straight, who have accepted the love of Jesus and accepted their attraction to men, is the church able to be humble like that Matt's professor? Is the church and the official people in the church, like priests, like bishops, like theologians, like the people that write the catechism and all these type of people, are they able to go away, to see our methodology, so to speak, to listen to our stories, to see what we've been through, and to review their theology, to review what they believe in, and to take into account our life experiences? And you see, if you think about it, the church is constantly basing theology on experience. Think about Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene saw the resurrected Jesus. Afterwards, so did the apostles. And so afterwards, the theology became Jesus resurrected. It's similarly down through the ages, say Saint Bernadette. Saint Bernadette saw Our Lady appear in Lourdes. Afterwards, there were miracles. At the start, the church did not believe at all, was afraid. However, over time, between the miracles and all the stories, the church began to realize, hold on, this is true, she's telling the truth, and now we need to believe it. It's the same at Medjugorje and all these type of places. 
Often at the start, the church refuses to believe. However, over the course of time, the church sees that these things are not going away, that something supernatural or something godly is happening, and eventually they change and they adopt, if you like, their belief systems, sometimes their theologies, to what the Holy Spirit is doing. And so you see, it's the same in this area. And of course, the church needs to be prudent. But prudence is not the same as fear. And prudence is a virtue like learning to drive. It doesn't justify you not driving. It just means that you should learn to drive and drive safely. And the church, of course, is called to examining these things prudently. Why? So it doesn't make a mistake. But prudently, prudence is not this sort of holy word to use when we want to do nothing. We can brush people off, we can sideline people, we can play the long game, we can say we're being patient, we're still thinking about it, we're praying about it. We can come up with all this holy baloney. But you know what, there comes a certain amount of time when you say, look, you're not examining it, you're not looking about it, at it, you're not entering into dialogue about it, in fact, you're just fobbing us off. And so you see, the church needs to be a place where the truth is valued, where what the Holy Spirit is doing is valued, where theology is valued, and where we're so in love and want the truth, just like that maths professor. He loved maths, and so he was prepared to be wrong, if meaning that he had the right answer to his maths problem. And so I would say the same thing. Are we in the church, are priests, theologians, bishops, cardinals, even the Pope himself, are they prepared to address this area and to accept that their theology might not be right, to accept that the Holy Spirit is bringing light to this area, and in bringing light to this area, that they have to review their approach. They have to listen and see and examine human experiences and come to a theology that map maps and actually is coherent and consistent with what people like me have lived and what lots of other people have lived. But that requires humility. And so today, I really would call on our Catholic Church to be a church of humility. There are so many fantastic, beautiful things in the church that are indisputable. The presence of Jesus, the power of the sacraments, the power of prayer, the power of the Holy Spirit, all these things, the family, all these things are beautiful. And I am not disputing them for one second, they're beautiful. But that doesn't mean that everything is perfect. And this whole gay area, LGBT area, it just does not add up. The theology, the pastoral approach, the action of the Holy Spirit, the healing ministry, it doesn't add up. And me, my life journey, my life experience highlights that. And sometimes I'm a little bit, I feel at times like one of those prophets in the Old Testament that just gets utterly crucified for telling the truth. They gets crucified just for saying, hey guys, I'm following Jesus, I'm following prayer, I'm doing everything that you've told me to do over the years, and just because the Holy Spirit isn't doing in my life what you were expecting, you're rejecting me. You're putting him in a box, you're putting me in a box, and you're putting lots of other people in a box. And so you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being treated like the outcast. I'm sick of the one begging and having almost no money at times. I'm sick of being called a demon follower. I'm sick of the spiritual abuse, the psychological abuse, my character being torn apart time after time after time. Why? Because these people in the church are not humble enough to listen. Because these people in the church are not humble enough to accept that there may be areas where they're blind to. And so I would say today, let our love for Jesus and let our love for the truth be far, far greater than our pride. Think of that maths professor. He had to swallow his pride, which he did, and he came to the right answer to that solution. And so may we in the church as well, may we be humble and may we swallow our pride. May we not be afraid to say we are wrong when we are wrong. And may we come to a better understanding of who Jesus is and of all people, all sexualities, all gender. And let us come to a far more holistic, integrated, sound approach so that young people and all people going forward in the church need not suffer needlessly like I have. And so please, if you're a bishop, if you're a priest, if you're someone with the power, with influence, don't be a coward. The world needs the truth. The future needs the truth. The truth will set you free. And also fighting for the truth is what will earn you your crown in heaven. So God bless you today. Seek the truth, seek Jesus, seek his divine mercy, seek his justice. And don't be afraid, because in eternity, you will be so, so, so delighted and happy that you followed your conscience 
and you stood up for what was right, even if other people disagreed with you. So may Our Lady, the Holy Spirit, and all the saints intercede for you, for me, for all of us today, and especially intercede for all those people who have found themselves in terrible, difficult situations, ostracized from church, family, caught up in addiction, some even committed suicide because of these problems. Lord Jesus, bring the truth. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.